Suppose f is a nice function, and I'm not really going to define what nice is because this whole video is going to be kind of hand wavy. That's just a warning in advance. We want to know what is the value of f of x plus f prime of x plus f double prime of x and so on. So, um, if we kind of continued adding on the derivatives forever. Now, I was just playing about with this earlier. It kind of reminded me of a geometric series. And I kind of thought, well, how do we kind of find the formula for an infinite geometric sum? Can, can we mimic that proof here? And yes, we can, again, provided f is nice. Um, so let's just call this answer g of x. So let g of x equal this thing here. So f of x plus f prime of x plus f double prime of x and so on forever. OK, well, let's just differentiate and see what we get. So what's g prime of x? Well, if we differentiate g of x, we're just going to differentiate each term in this sum here. So that's going to be f prime of x because the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. The derivative of f prime of x is f double prime of x. The derivative of f double prime is f triple prime. Oops. And so on. OK, cool. And now you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract one from the other. So if I do g of x minus g prime of x, I'm doing this top equation 1 minus equation 2. And if I do that, the f primes will cancel out. The f double primes will cancel out. There'll be an f triple prime here. That will cancel out with that guy. In fact, all these terms here will cancel out. And all I'm left with is f of x. So g of x minus g prime of x is f of x. And so if I just multiply both sides by minus 1, I get g prime of x minus g of x equals minus f of x. OK, cool. Now, this is just a differential equation in terms of g. We've got dg dx minus g of x equals minus f of x. And in fact, this is quite nice. This is a first order linear differential equation. So we can solve this uh, using the integrating factor method. So if you've not seen this before, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but a quick search online. I'm sure you can uh, understand how this works. But essentially what we're going to do is multiply both sides here by what's called the integrating factor. And in this case, it's e to the minus x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the minus x. So we get something like this. And now the beauty of this is this left hand side here is an exact derivative. Um, so this is the exact derivative of e to the minus x times g of x. So you can just see this by using the product rule and expanding this, you get this left hand side here. Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So the derivative of e to the minus x g of x equals minus e to the minus x f of x. So to make g of x a subject, first things first, we've got to get rid of the d dx. In order to do that, we're just going to integrate both sides. So we get e to the minus x g of x equals minus the integral of e to the minus x times f of x dx. Or if you want to be maybe slightly more formal, but again, as I say, this is kind of hand wavy, we can make, maybe write this as minus the integral from, let's say, 0 to x of e to the minus u times f of u du. So using a dummy variable here. And this 0 here also allows us uh, to incorporate a constant term. So we're going to put a plus c on the end, like so. Uh, OK, cool. And so then to get g of x, we just multiply both sides by e to the x. So we get g of x, therefore g of x equals e to the x multiplied by uh, this thing here. So minus the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus u times oh, f of u du plus a constant c. And so this is what this function g of x should be. So provided f is nice, and again, I haven't defined what I mean by nice, um, g of x will equal e to the x times this thing here. So minus the integral from 0 to x of e to the minus u times f of u du plus a constant. So maybe you can think about what conditions, you know, what, what does the word nice mean in this context? Obviously, f has to be infinitely differentiable, but we might think, you know, for example, for an infinite geometric series, that ratio has to be between minus one and one. Do we have a, some sort of an equivalent condition here? So I'll let you discuss that in the comments down below, but hopefully uh, you, you've enjoyed this. Just playing about with some functions. I think it's just a fun thing to do, seeing see if you can uh, find something interesting. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.